We know that conceptualization is together with all of the staff in the room, including the therapists, uh, the physicians, the uh, uh, supported employment specialists, all on the same page to try to understand what, what the community is looking at. So I will quickly answer some of the burning questions I know you have about this case. Um, so she has um, conceptualized the voices as real, that they could in fact hurt her, that they did in fact have power. And so what we did is we did a lot of cognitive restructuring and hypothesis testing around whether or not those voices were real. We did a lot of acceptance work of we will still hear these voices, but that does not mean that they actually have power. Um, we did a lot of work around showing her evidence of you didn't you still ate the chocolate nothing happened um, and it had it was very difficult because there was a great deal of yeah but they could do it when i'm sleeping and you wouldn't know and so then we had to say okay but they said they would hurt your family that was a different thing they said they would do but nothing happened so we did a lot of that really though what i had to start with was cognitive enhancement training because she had a really difficult time with her memory and her speed of information processing. So we did a lot of work of just, hey, let's focus on doing something different. It also included some behavioral activation because she would practice these different things. We did a lot of compensatory work, and then we were able to do the hypothesis testing associated with CBT. We did a lot of social skills training and a ton of public rehab. Um, so she got a whole host of different things, but it started with the idea that I had to get rid of that core belief that those voices were going to, they were some sort of entity that actually could harm her and her family. Okay, so we talked a bit about um, supporting such as a care model, this is the information about our program, but as Dr. Shapiro was saying, we, what we do is case conceptualization with our clients. We do it in, during our treatment team. So we sit down and say, okay, this is our new client, these are the symptoms, this is what I think is driving or maintaining these symptoms, here's what I think is a helpful treatment, I'm going to need you, supporting education and employment specialist, I need you, family advocate, I need you, so-and-so, also, they're going to come to your group and your group, we really sit down and talk about what's going on with the client, how I conceptualize it um, as the lead clinician, and then I get feedback from my other clinicians, Dr. Shapiro, and the rest of our group to say, actually, did you consider this, or maybe this is driving this symptom, which might be a little different than the rest of the constellation of symptoms. So really making sure that we're conceptualizing things as a whole team, and that the whole team is integrated into um, this individual's care. Questions? <laughs> Not that we have a ton of time, but any questions you have, please uh, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. <laughs> it, was, it was a long slog with uh, that particular client, um, and it took some head banging on my part. Of, I felt very ineffective as a clinician, and then I had really good um, supportive feedback from a supervisor at the time, so I was just a postdoc, to say, I think you're used to having more rapid results, and it doesn't happen with every client you have, so you have to learn to slow yourself down and accept where she is and where you might be with her. That was really helpful. What, what, what did you end up with the medication regimen? What, we what? stayed the same. You stated 1,000 milligrams? Yep. Plasma levels were all good? Yep. The medication didn't change at all. It was only the therapy treatment that changed, and that's what made the difference. So there, there, and the research, there is a lot of research now on sort of programmatic care. Mm -hmm. Programmatic care is more effective than medication or therapy, either one of them. Yeah. What about transcranial? Stimulation. The ECT didn't work then. Uh, transcranial wasn't going to, nor was DBS. That was what the indicated um, treatments uh, neural specialist was saying. There are a lot of trials yeah. conducted at the moment on those kind of, I don't know if people are familiar, but stimulating the brain with direct current mm -hmm. in various ways. Um, the preliminary results are that they help in the very short term, but once the direct effects of the, the stimulus wear off, they don't seem to have any lasting effects. And that was what happened with ECT. She had a nice, symptoms were there, but really low level, easy to ignore, and it became a little bit bad, and so she was less than reduced. So yeah, um, but as Dr. Shapiro was saying, I, you know, I didn't do this in a vacuum. I did a lot of work by myself, but it took also a lot of integration of other healthcare professionals to help get this young woman where she needed to be. Um, 
that's when it was awful working, you know, in concert with the, uh, the clinic I was at didn't have the 48 specialty care model. So it took me following a bunch of different go rehab cases and um, implementing our social skills and a cop grab group and having her come and working with a lot of different people in the community to help shore up this young woman's skills and her natural supports. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, very, very great day.